One thing I generally try to avoid discussing in my videos, unless it's extremely relevant, is politics. It's a divisive subject, and I'd like my videos to be an escape from the craziness of the real world. But this time, I think I can put that rule aside to talk about the several presidential campaigns of a certain stuff-and-fluff third-party candidate. Disney bought the rights to Winnie the Pooh in 1961, although the first animated short they made didn't premiere for another five years. In 1966, Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree was released to generally mixed reactions from audiences. It was not quite the smash hit that Disney had perhaps hoped it would be, and British audiences were especially unhappy. Pooh is the creation of British author A.A. A. Milne, and the original stories are an absolute delight, full of humor and wordplay that is often gentle, yet also clever and engaging. Pooh's first Disney outing put more of an emphasis on slapstick humor, and the beloved character Piglet was completely absent. The addition of a new, distinctly American gopher character didn't help, nor did Christopher Robin's American accent, which was redubbed in Future Prince. Disney knew that the silly old bear still held a lot of potential for them, and so another short was released in 1968. Winnie the Pooh and the Blustery Day introduced Piglet, Tigger, Heffalumps, and Woozles into the Disney franchise, and was a much bigger success, winning the Academy Award for Best Animated Short and cementing Pooh's status as a star. To promote the Blustery Day, Disney had Pooh announce his presidential campaign on July 14, 1968. Having this character doing something so explicitly American probably didn't get Disney that much goodwill from the Brits, but it proved to be a popular gimmick at Disneyland. Throughout the rest of July and August, a musical segment was added to one of Disneyland's live Kids of the Kingdom shows promoting the bear. This first run was the reason I wanted to make this video in the first place. Although the later campaigns would have plenty of marketing and theme park promotions, the 68 one had an entire TV special. And not a big budget Disney finance special either. It was locally produced in Florida. You might think that would have something to do with Walt Disney World being in Florida, but that wouldn't open for another few years. The details on the special are a bit hazy, but I do know that it was sponsored by Sears, which had officially partnered with Disney in promoting Pooh merchandise around this time. The special was hosted by Chuck Zink, better known as Skipper Chuck to many children at the time. Skipper Chuck hosted the Popeye Playhouse show for over 20 years. It was in the vein of a lot of kid shows at the time, with a friendly host, a live audience of children, a cast of silly characters and puppets, and a few cartoons sprinkled in. Similar kinds of shows had been hosted by Howdy Doody, Pinky Lee, and King Koopa that one time. These shows were once staples of children's television, but have mostly gone out of style. The only ones that I can remember airing when I was a kid were Wienerville, which was rerun at Ungodly Hours, and Bozo Circus. I don't know who Bozo is. What, is he a clown? What, is he a clown? What, are you kidding me? Well, what is he? Yes, he's a clown! All right, so what's the big deal? There's millions of clowns! <laughs> Despite having 20 years' worth of shows, I could find very few clips of the Popeye Playhouse. However, from what I read about Chuck Zink, he sounded like a very kind person, and I hope for the sake of the people who grew up with this show that more clips can surface. But enough beating around the bush and reminiscing about shows I never watched, let's look at this special. Winnie the Pooh quickly takes the stand to give a speech, and some of your jaws may already be dropping at this point. That's a very strange looking Pooh to us today, but it was actually a variation on the standard costume at the time. Pooh appeared at the parks with a bulbous head and barely movable arms, sporting a honeypot that his performer could see out of. Similar designs were used on characters like the Three Little Pigs and the Mad Hatter until the early 90s. The change was a practical one. Not only did they look alien, but due to the lack of arm movements, if one of these characters fell over, they weren't getting back up without help. The point is, while this might strike you as a bootleg poo that you'd see hanging out with Elmo at Times Square, he's actually very close to the original costume. The biggest difference is the eyes. The theme park poo had red and black eyes, which were meant to look like beads on a teddy bear. This poo has bright yellow eyes. A small detail, but a very unsettling one. While Disney was okay with supplying Pooh's likeness and costume design, they apparently did not supply Pooh's voice actor, Sterling Holloway, and it shows. One day, I was sitting under the big tree, and I said to Owl, I dreamed that you, and Rabbit, and Kanga, and Roo wanted me to be president. So I think I'll be president. Oh, Pooh, what has the Sunshine State done to you? Sterling Holloway's portrayal of Pooh has become iconic over the years, and it's very hard not to hear his voice when reading the original stories. 
This Poo sounds more like a drunken Edwin, and his very slow line delivery doesn't help. As you heard in the clip, Poo's decision to run for president was a spur-of-the-moment one after having a dream, which isn't entirely out of character. Poo promises that if he's elected, ice cream cones will cost five cents, kids will have four hours of recess every day, and of course, there will be honey in every pot. He also wants to paint the White House pink and have picnics on the lawn. It sounds like Pooh's dialogue was written before the blustery day hit theaters. Pooh mentions Rabbit, Owl, Eeyore, Kanga, and Roo, who all appeared in the Honey Tree, but does not mention Piglet and Tigger, who were introduced in the blustery day. So who, you may be asking, is Winnie the Pooh running against? A strange scoundrel named Rodney the Rotten Wolf, who appears to have been created for the special. He openly hates children, and his supporters are made up of kids in tattered clothing. They didn't shop at Sears. Rodney stands for the opposite of what Pooh says. He wants expensive ice cream cones, for one thing. He also wants to bring back child labor in fields, factories, and mines. Just like Pooh leads the kids in a pledge to be good, loving citizens, Rodney leads the kids in his own warped pledge. And now, if you'll take the Rodney Rotten Wolf pledge, I promise to hate all animals. Or pay attention to hate all animals, especially yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you could have said that a little louder, couldn't you? This whole special runs for half an hour, so you may be hoping for a surreal, low-budget story of political intrigue with Rodney trying to one-up Pooh and messing around in the Hundred Acre Woods. I admit I was. Instead, while the votes are being tallied, there are various skits with other cast members of the Popeye Playhouse, and of course, plugs for Sears. Several times, the latest Sears fashions are shown off by some of the kids. These portions are narrated by a character named Annie Orphanic, a play on the comic strip character Little Orphan Annie. Don't like clothes shopping? What about clowns? You like clowns? We get not one, but two comedy sketches with clowns. The first has Sparkles the Clown and a guy named Scrubby trying to buy a hot dog from a clown vendor named Ho-Ho. It becomes a battle of wits as Ho-Ho attempts to take their money while keeping the actual meat for himself. The scene is done in pantomime with Chuck narrating. Although we don't really need his narration per se, the way he describes the scene has its own charm to it. wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> well, that'll teach you, Ho-Ho, that Friday you ended up with a hot finger. Now he says, I want a real sure enough hot dog, Buster. That's it. Put it right in there. The second sketch has the same trio discussing their votes. The clowns are voting for Pooh, but Scrubby insists that Rodney the Rotten Wolf is the way to go. He talks about the funny ways Rodney has brutalized kids and demonstrates it on the clowns. The clowns realize that Rodney has hypnotized Scrubby and cure him with cream pies to the face. And if you don't like clowns, how about chimps? A performance by Beatrice Dante and her performing chip Twiggy follows. I can't find anything about Miss Beatrice online, as all searches inevitably lead to results on the Divine Comedy, rather than the Animal Trainer. The votes are finely tallied, and although the results are surprisingly close, Pooh is the winner. Rodney stomps off, demanding a recount. Florida does not have a good track record with those, huh? I remember seeing a few short clips of the special on YouTube, and I was fascinated. I was especially excited when I found the entire thing online at the Wolfson Archives, who have hours and hours of Florida history available for all to view on their website. I had hopes that this would be as insane as the new Fantasyland special I talked about a year ago, the one where various Disney characters menace Heather O'Rourke and act like a religious cult. Sadly, this special was not quite as bonkers as that, but that kind of madness is hard to come by. I'm just happy it's been preserved, one way or another. Pooh would go on to run for president again in 1972, 1976, and 1980. Although the future campaigns didn't have TV specials, Pooh would go on tour in 1972 alongside his campaign manager, Eeyore, and his press secretary, Tigger. Kids were able to meet their favorite characters outside of the theme parks, and it was a rousing success. 1972 was also the debut of the now-classic Main Street Electrical Parade in Disneyland, which originally featured Pooh's campaign float at the grand finale. 1976 had a promotional record released, alongside a coloring book. The record contained a song and story, as many children's records did. In the story, Christopher Robin explains to Pooh what a president does, with Pooh taking everything literally, 
like thinking that a presidential platform is something you stand on, or a political party is like a birthday party. The accompanying song was written and performed by Larry Gross along with Sterling Holloway. 1980 was a relatively smaller affair. In the Winnie the Pooh newspaper strip, which ran for 10 years, a story arc around the time had Pooh running for president. Piglet casually mentions that being president is hard work, which is enough to inspire Pooh to throw in the towel. I also found a Sears catalog ad from that year, but that's about it. Pooh's final campaign was on an even smaller scale. In 1995, a promotion ran at Walt Disney World where Pooh ran for the mayor of Main Street, USA. He ran against Captain Hook, who was an odd choice, since the characters have absolutely nothing in common. I assume that Disney wanted Pooh's victory to be a sure thing. I can't find if Pooh won or not, but I don't think Captain Hook ever had a chance, no matter how many votes he ended up getting. That should wrap up the story of Pooh's political career. In the end, I'm sure the silly old bear is happier eating honey and enjoying time with his friends instead of sitting in the Oval Office. Even if we'll never see Pooh in the Hall of Presidents, this is probably for the best. The only donkeys and elephants needed in his life are Eeyore and Lumpy the Heffalump. If only everything was that simple. Not again. Well, I guess that's what you'd call a real swingin' hot dog.